Hi, I'm Eric. And I'm Lisa. Today we're talking about three trends all conscious couples face that keep them in constant disagreement. First, we want to take time to uh, tell you how much we appreciate you being here with us and taking time out of your day. We know how your time is so precious and, you know, things get busy, but we really appreciate you being here with us. And, you know, we really, really are about helping conscious couples get back to what matters. Yeah, we do. Yep. You know, back to those heart-touched feelings and those emotions and that connection to, you know, to what makes your your life every day, what matters to you, what brings you joy. And that's that's why we're here today. So we we really appreciate you taking time out of your, your morning to be here with us. And yep. we love the fact that you are. Yeah, our second show. Still a little nervous, but we're here. We're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to talk about the three bad contributions in a relationship. So the first one that we have seen is the lack of trust. Um, you know, when someone has trust, they, you know, they believe without a doubt who you, you know, who you are and what you say and what you do, but when you don't have that trust, you have insecurities from hurt that, you know, maybe it came from past relationships or past acts that someone's done, you know, you know, it, it comes from a number of sources, but it, it, it's, the point is that it's usually it comes from hurt and, you know, these are, you know, it causes unnecessary conclusions towards your partner and it really, it sets a bad tone in your relationship. Yeah, really, you know, trust in your relationship, it's about commitment. Um, it's about uh, growing together with your common interests and, you know, it's being rooted to what making you have, what you have making work together as a couple. You know, my, in my experience with what I had, um, you know, I had a very bad experience with my um, abuse and my yep. sexual abuse of what happened to me, that my outlook towards any relationship and towards, you know, the in general of being in a relationship was was not good. I didn't trust I basically I didn't trust being with somebody else and I didn't trust um I didn't trust that I could really be with somebody else because I had such a bad experience happen to me. So, you know, when when I met you <laughs> I, I was like, wow, I said, you know, here's somebody else coming in my life that has shown me something so different than what I had experienced before. You know, I had went out on dates and but there really wasn't that, that something that said to me, you know, this is somebody that I could see building my life with. And then I had, I had met you and, you know, even from the time that we met, I had shared with you, you know, what what I kind of wanted out of a partner mm -hmm. and you really took it slow, yeah. you know, when we yeah. first got together, you know, I, you know, you didn't know about what happened to me at this point, no, no. but you also had this, um, you had this way of slowly allowing me to express what, you know, my feelings of, of, I guess you would say unknown hurt because it was hurt that you didn't know about. Well, it's a good thing I didn't know because I proposed with you to you to what? what? Four months. <laughs> yeah, it's been four months. So. <laughs> um, that's, you know, and it was actually in this month of April, um, 17 years ago, that we went on our first date. So it was a really big celebration for us because it was, you know, I had always said, I, I had this wonderful vision that I always said, of somebody who I wanted to show up at my door of, you know, my, of who I wanted to be with. Yep. So when, you know, the day that you showed up at my door, you, you were in it. It was like, oh my goodness. But then, like, you know, we went on our first date and I started to see something and feel something in you that I could start trusting. Mm -hmm. And that was important from the beginning that I started to feel and see something in you that I could really start trusting. And over time, that trust has only come to a place where we are today, where, you know, we're really building um, a great foundation. But overcoming that, because if you don't change your perspective of it and your perspective of the relationship, your relationship has very little chance of surviving because you put up these walls, barriers. Yep, you do. 
um, the crash waiting to happen, really. It is. <laughs> um, you know, overcoming it and how to overcome it, you really have to start seeing that part of yourself that you can really start trusting yourself and loving yourself. And you have to be able to... Um, you really have to be able to find the love in yourself that you can give to somebody else. Yep. Yeah, that that's kind of leads us into the next thing, which is little or no appreciation. I know it's the recon. It is what, re what appreciation is is the recognition and the enjoyment of the good qualities. And when you don't have that, you take for granted. You nitpick. You criticize over little things. You be you belittle. You judge. You know, and then. You know, it's possible that other people that you have in your work life or friends and, you know, they become more attractive and it could stray you, you know, a lot easier if you didn't, if you had more appreciation. So and that, that takes me to one of my stories is when I began, when me and Lisa began our spiritual journey, I really started to dive into it really deep. And, you know, I was kind of a little bit ahead of her. You know, I was searching through that. A connection that someone could relate to me with and we didn't really have that at that point so you know on Facebook you had those you know like-minded people that you you know you you're become friends with and there was a girl on there who I connected with and you know we had conversations and lengthy ones at times and often it became more and more often so I, you know I started to stray a little bit and I didn't you know leave Lisa or anything but it's just the point of you know looking to others you know, when we have someone right next to us, when we should be sharing our life together in the first place. So, I mean, at you know, at that time when that started to happen, we both started to, you know, less there was less appreciation with both of us. You yeah. know, I started to lose track of the little things that he would do or that he did do. You know, the little things of taking out the garbage and, you know, we, you know, there was forgetting to say thank you yep. um you know so when you get distracted away from that appreciation you start to drift even farther yeah and was, you start to get picked yeah know. i think a lot of it has to do with our situation and stress you know stress and you know, finances and it just became very overwhelming at one point and we were really struggling with what we wanted to do and where we wanted to go and you know how we want to get out of our you know our circumstance and so I think we just let our worries consume us way, way too much. And we weren't, you know, we weren't actively engaging our life in a way that we could, you know, transform our situation. So we really, we, we were, at that time, we were really victims of our own situation, so our own circumstance. So, so, I mean, it's necessary to have creation, you know, like I said, to create a great relationship. And if you don't, I mean, just... This leads for a, a partnership instead of a relationship. Sometimes. Right. Yeah. There's, um, you know, you get back in touch with those things that matter. There's, you start to experience less of the joy, uh, less of the gratitude. You know, is your, you have to look at your relationship. Is it fun? You know, do you feel connected to the one that you're with? Yep. Um, you know, are you saying thank you? You know, even for cooking dinner, you know, somebody your partner takes time and you know what what it also i found out is that you started to cook dinner with me yeah and then yeah. we started to really you know so those little things when you you know when you see the good things you actually invite your partner in to join in with you and yeah. then you start engaging in life together that's actually something nice that busy couples can do if they do have time to you know cook dinner together it's a great time to talk and communicate and it is yeah so uh one of the other things we feel is you know better to agree uh you know having what agreeing is is sympathy and consenting uh, but when you don't agree it's those times where anger accelerates to cause hurt and resentment and you know it kind of gets back to where we one of the first points we made is you know lack of trust um, we really don't have a lot of experience in this because, you know, we're we're peaceful people. We always have been, and we don't fall in our parents' relationships where they, they would keep arguing and escalating worse and worse. You know, it's become a, uh, like a, you know, uh, vocal match of who could, 
yell the loudest and who could hurt each other more. And, you know, I always saw that. I, I did not like that whatsoever. So I always said to myself, I, I never want to have a relationship where I'm arguing like that because it just doesn't solve or resolve anything. I mean, if you, you look at your own relationship and you can ask yourself, you know, we don't, do we, what do, what do we agree on? Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at it and you ask yourself, you know, there are some things that we agree on, but we're really two different people. Exactly. And, you know, why, you know, why focus on the negative aspect of it and bring into the relationship a nice, peaceful agreement? And, but the truth is that, you know, it's not always going to happen. There's going to be, you know, there's going to be things that you like to do. There's going to be things that he likes to do. Yep. And that's really okay. Yeah. We found that out with ourselves. Exactly. That's, you know, everyone's unique. And, you know, what's great about a relationship is you combine those two uniqueness together. And then you create another unit of uniqueness. You know, how you can, you know, co-create together. And that's something real special. No. So, you know, if we, you know, I mean, here. <laughs> there, let's face it, if we don't, there can be a lot of turmoil in a relationship. There can be. You know, if, if you guys are trying to, you know, fight one another on, you know, am I right or is he right? It's, it just causes a lot of built up feelings and resentment. And, you know, you kind of, Lose the chemistry, yeah, you know, and chemistry, chemistry is so important, right, and you know it's it's that chemistry that leads into some really beautiful, beautiful connections, and you know the the truth of it is, you know what you're here, and why not enjoy life together right. and make it about what matters. um you know if you're if you're feeling in a relationship that you're just not feeling you know, safe in and especially if there's physical abuse. Now we have another issue. So I mean it's it's always good to to get help in that part of your relationship. You know, you can see somebody, you can talk to family and friends about it. It's not always easy. I know that from experience. It's not easy to let go of what hurts you. But the reward of it is so beautiful when you do because those built up feelings and those built up stuff that happens it only, you know, it only adds to what you're already feeling of the hurt and the anger. And when you, when that stuff is let go, it opens up these really beautiful doors yeah. of some really great stuff that can be created together in your relationship, you know, in life mm -hmm. and in your heart. And it's because it's really all about getting back to that feeling of love. Saying really love. I mean, what really else matters, really? I mean, <clears throat> what if you look back to all your favorite memories, what were they besides being hurtful? Is what is the flip coin of that? So, you know, those times in where you you know, you had the love or the excitement or the joy, the fun, you know, those are those are what make the memories really, you know, count. You know, making those memories. Like my dad was saying <clears throat> when he was uh, you know, sick with a cancer, he really focused on he kept saying, Making those memories, you know. Got to make those memories. So yeah. you know, he really realized that at the end of his life that you know, it's very important. I mean, other than trying to get over his sickness, that was his main concern was, you know, getting together with family as often as he could and, you know, sharing those, you know, co-creations that we can He make. even had this wonderful aspect about him. Um, on, you know, he always, he always knew there was disagreement between people. Yep, and he, he was a peacekeeper, but what he always made sure to do was to tell us that, you know, sometimes it's better to agree to disagree. That's it. Yep. You know, it's, let's face it, you know, you're, like I said before, you're not always going to agree on everything. And sometimes it's better to say, all right, you know, walk away. And it's just better to agree to disagree. Yep, sure is. You know, that's. Yeah, it's, it's it's honor and respecting each other too, you know. I mean, we shouldn't ha we shouldn't have to agree on everything, you know. How boring would that be if we all like the same thing, all did the same thing, you know? That would be boring. I mean, that's, like I said, it's part of the uniqueness of the relationship. So it really makes you know. I don't think really people realize how special 
relationships really are. Yeah, they can bring... But They're hard, no doubt. <laughs> That's the reason behind it all. Yeah, they can, you know, you really bring something out of yourself, especially when, you know, you're with somebody who can really bring that aspect of their, their selves yep. to you, to the relationship, too. And, you know, it's a because it's such a unique combination of the two of you. I remember a lot of um, holidays, you know, when we had the farm, we kind of had to agree sometimes on you know who we were going to go visit yeah. and it was hard because sometimes you know you didn't get to go visit this person and you didn't get to go visit my family but we maybe we didn't get to go visit your family but what was nice is we kind of said okay we said maybe this holiday we'll visit my family and the next holiday you know we'll visit your family but so most of the time it crams all into one uh, i don't know how we did it <laughs> hurry up get up early get things done head out but what was nice is we always said, okay, we always knew, you know, this is what we had to do. So we agreed that this is what we had to do to get done, mm -hmm. you know, and then that's how it was really nice because we, we both brought ourselves together to know that we had to get done in order to go visit everybody. So, you know, that just made me think, I mean, there's so many different and more things and examples that we could give especially with the business and with yep. the kids and with life in general. But it just makes me think about sometimes that, you know what? It's, you know, you're not compromising yourself when you do that. Yep. You're just saying to yourself, all right, I honor your opinion. I love you. I honor your opinion. I have my opinion too. You know, what? you can express your opinion. Mm -hmm. it's what, that's what's really special is when, you know, your partner respects your opinion. You know, listen without judging. Right, and listen. And it's very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the the couples that can really take their uh, relationship to the next level is the ones who can, you know, bring out the best of each other. Right, right. And that's, you know, how wonderful is that? Because when you're bringing out the best of each other, you're bringing it to everyone you encounter. You know, if you have kids, you're bringing it to your kids. You're bringing it around your family. You're bringing it when you walk in your room, when you go to work, mm -hmm. you know, the people you meet at the grocery store. You're bringing the best of yourself out. And really, when you can bring this, the best of yourself out, you can bring it to your partner, you can bring your love, your support, you can have that trust, and you can really connect on a really great, deeper level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it really comes down, what's the vision you have for your relationship? You know, what, what, do you, what do you want to do with the relationship? How do you want to be? Do you want to be that loving, kind relationship? I mean, it's, it's really about... The acts more it is than the words. I mean, you know, treating those. Treating those intimate moments. Yep. Creating those. You know, we talked about last time on the show, which, by the way, are all archived. Um, you can find them archived here on Blog Talk Radio. You can go to our website and you can find them there, too. But it's really, we talked about last time about having you know, having a vision and no clarity. Right. Um, so when you when you can have that vision and clarity, you actually can create a wonderful vision for your life together. Mm -hmm. Yep, it sure does. Um, you know, this uh, this this we found out and this is one reason why we created our five step manifest plan. Right. Um, because we we through our vision we came up with this beautiful way of putting this all together to help us move forward with what we wanted to do and the vision yep. that we had for ourselves. Yep. Um, you know, the five steps manifest plan uh, is wonderfully put together with um, first your concept conception of vision. Sorry about that. You know, this is where you identify what you want and where you want to go with it. You know, I'll touch base a little on that. Um, when we first got together on the farm, mm -hmm. you know, we touched base on this last time too. When we got together on the farm, we said, okay, this is what we wanted to do with our life. This is what we wanted to do. At we, the time. At the time, right. <laughs> obviously, you're going to change over time. And that's one thing you got to recognize, too, that everyone's constantly changing. And if, if you really want to grow, you're going to embrace that change. Right. Life is constantly changing, too. It so, is. Um, so cyclical. Identify what you want and where you want to go with it. This mm -hmm. is important for your relationship just as much as life in general. Um, it really helps to build on something really great. Right. Um, you know, that leads into your present reality. You know, this is what is here in the now. You know, what you have, 
uh, and honor is, it. Yeah, and honor it. <laughs> Um, what is needed to get started? You know, there's plenty of times where you may ask yourself, hey, I want to do this, and I know that I'm here right now, but I don't know what I need to get started to do it. You know, this is this is where you get informed. Yeah. You start to educate yourself so you can make really good choices. Yeah, maybe you want to go for hikes, but you really haven't taken action to do it, you know, so, you know, schedule it in. And we were just <laughs> we were just talking about this last night because I'm learning all the new technical stuff, <laughs> which I've never learned technical stuff. And I'm like, I said to Eric, I said, now I know why so many people go out and they actually hire, you know, tech people <laughs> because I'm going through a learning process myself <laughs> of yep. knowing where I'm at right now. Um, you know, this leads into your your action plan. You know, this is the the place where you have um, a handle on where you want to go. Um, Before you get too far, I'll touch base a little bit on the present reality. You have to know where you want to go, too. So where you are today compared to where you want to go with your relationship, know the difference between the two so you can make that action plan you know, work for you. That's a really good point. Because um, let's, you have to, with your action plan, you have to know what's needed next right. to, to develop the, you know, the goals, the milestones. Um, they help you have a time frame, you know, I want to do this in a certain amount of time, you know, and then when you lay out your time frame, you can then more easily schedule. Schedule, schedule, schedule. This Can't is, say it enough. <laughs> this is something we've been learning, you know, if you don't schedule it, mm -hmm. it's not going to be there and you're not going to get it done. Yep. I'll, I'll give you a quick example. You know, a lot of times when we're, as we're going through life, and we're busy, and one of the kids come up and say, Daddy, can I color with you? You're like, oh, maybe later. I'm busy right now. And then later you, you say, oh, you want to color now? And they're like, no, I'm I'm watching cartoons, or I'm playing in my fort, or I don't want to go outside. So you kind of miss those opportunities. There's nothing like the present time to take advantage of those moments because you may not get them back. And the next thing you know, the kids are getting older and older, and you've lost a lot of time that you can never get back. I've learned that lesson myself. But when the kids ask me for something now, I just stop what I'm doing. If I'm on a computer or whatever. I just stop. I say, okay, what do you want to do? You want to read or you want to you want to color? Let's let's do it right now because you, know, you just never know. I know, and I'm actually guilty of that. I found it happening yesterday when you know the little one said, you know, you want to do this, and I said, oh, I said. You know, in a few minutes, I'm kind of working on something right now. And then by the time came later, they were playing so well together. You know, they, mommy just didn't get the chance to actually, you know, play with them. And so uh, when I went to bed last night, I said, you know, I said, I felt really bad because I didn't take that time to play with them. And as much as, much as I need that reminder so often myself, uh, let's face it, we're all human. And That's it. So, um, you know, just just to touch base on this action plan that we that we part of what we created, you know, some things should be quick and yeah. easy. Quick and easy. While other things, you know, <laughs> draw they need to be drawn out. You know, get your calendar out if you have a you know if you have one of those calendar books. You know, this is a good time to, to get them vacations, down. <laughs> you know? Those vacations are fun. Right. I mean. You know, don't put that adventure off that you want to take because, you know, five years from now, you might be saying, hey, you know, why didn't we do that? Yep. You know, plan it. Make time for it because what it does is also <laughs> helps you create those habits that naturally, you know, pull yeah. you. Well, you might, yeah, you might have to save up money for it, too, or something. So you got to be able to do that. Right. You might have to put in a little overtime at work. You might have to schedule time off of work. So these are all things that help build up to, you know doing what you want to do so it it really does help things flow a whole lot easier and then you know after the action plan this is your, what we call your ifra this is your <laughs> and you know this one is all together this is your implement feedback research and adjust you know once you start creating the action plan you I should start taking action yep you should this is your feedback this is what you feel right with you know this is you know is it are you moving in the direction that you want to go are you not moving in the direction you want to go mm -hmm. and you should really know this 
I mean, if it doesn't feel right, maybe you're not moving towards what you want to do. Another difference between feeling right and being uncomfortable with the acts. You know, if you're doing, if you're trying to be more adventurous, you know, if it's a little scary, like it's, like I said, taking those hikes, well, yeah, sometimes those things are, you know, a little fearful, but, you know, it's what you want, so. Wait, that's, you know, that comes back to making flexible, you know, adjustments. Yeah, flexible, right. Like, all right, so maybe your partner doesn't feel too comfortable at taking the hike. So right. this is where you can kind of bring the agreement in. Okay, so maybe you don't want the hike. Take a hike. Maybe. Walk on the beach or something. Right, maybe you can go to the park. Maybe you can take a hike. You know, through maybe she's afraid of heights, he or she. Maybe you can say, okay, let's go to the park instead and let's take a hike through the woods where there's no hikes. And, yeah. you know, I remember the time when we went to Arizona and I didn't really want to go up high, <laughs> but Eric and the kids were all about it. I said, okay, I'm going to stay down here and I'm going to take some pictures of you guys <laughs> up there. You know, I rode through that by the time we went to um, Sedona, got back from Sedona because the, the mountains there were so gorgeous. They yeah. had to go up to the top and see them. But that's where you can come in an agreement. But, um, you know, remember when you're when you're implementing and you're doing this, you know, trust me, there will be detours that happen yep. because life happens. It does. And yep. um, but there also be shortcuts. Yep. You know, there's sure stuff is. that you can find that, you know, hey, this this is great. Maybe this will help me better, you know, implement my plan. And, you know, if you don't know something, find out about it. Do That's some right. research. You know, if you want to take that trip, call. We we went through AAA and we found some great ways to get out there. Right. And, you know, other people can help you. Right. And the research, if you're trying to research your spouse, it's going to take <laughs> communication. <laughs> That's funny. <that> you <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's it's really about opening it up and, you know, finding out what they like and what they don't like and, you know, you know, putting together something that you can both do. So <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> be sure to ask your partner or spouse because, you know, and be sure to tell them, you know, hey, I don't feel so comfortable with that. Maybe we can do something different or, yeah. you know. And you might, you know, maybe when you, like, we recommend, like, doing dates with self, too. So maybe you can say that one thing that the other person is fearful of or doesn't want to do and do it yourself, and then they can do something on theirs by themselves. And then, you know, there's something that you can do together that you both can appreciate. And yeah, enjoy. because remember that uniqueness we talked about, right. you know. But it, that, that date with yourself is important because then you actually, you do get to do what you want to do. And recharge. And, and you feel better. So what's more wonderful than coming back, you know, with your partner and saying, oh, that's so you know, really felt great to do that. You know, maybe next time, you know, you know, they'll want to go do something on their own. And that's, that's great. Yeah. That's great to do. It's also important, I think, too, because we, we do need those breaks because we get, sometimes you get, some people can get along fine with being in each other's presence all the time. And others can't. So we need, you know, people need, need those breaks from each other. Yeah. I remember when we were working on the farm, somebody said to me, they said, you know, it's great how you and Eric can work together and be together all the time because I could just never do that. And, you know, the truth is, is that even though we were working in the farm and on the barn together all the time, we still took our personal spaces, right. you know. He would go for a hike up at the pond. and Give each other the night off. Or yeah. Something. But it's just, you know, have that moment by yourself, especially if you're in a business together. Yeah. It's important to have that space because if you're working out of your home, especially like we do, you know, you have to find that space to kind yeah. of create for yourself. Because after all, this is about, you know, your your goal, your, your, your dream, yeah. your outcome. And this is, you know, this is the fifth um, step of our action plan. This is your manifested destination. You know, your goal, your dream, your outcome. This is what you want to get out of what you're creating. Um, you know, the place you have to work to accomplish is right here at this moment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's right in front of you. Yep. Getting there. So. Yeah, and you know, this place can change as you go. We found this out. You right. know, it's nothing set in stone. So as you're as you're going through your journey of you know creating what you want to create or being what you want to be, fulfilling your dreams, remember it can change. And so you know, be willing to modify, or change. You know, what's that saying? Roll with it. Yeah. Because go with the flow. It's all about how your heart feels. And what about you, what you really feel? So, 
<laughs> it's funny because the farm we thought was overall generally what we wanted. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, those things can change along the way. And we really had to discover that for ourselves. It was okay yeah. to really let go of that and create something new. And now we're here today. Yeah. On the radio with you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So our next thing that we we enjoy the, is our sharing our happy place meditation. So we'd like to take you on a, a brief meditation. So we'll take you right there. You know, um, meditation sometimes can just be, you know, just sitting and closing your eyes comfortably, you know, if you... Go with what you feel comfortable with. If you're, of course, if you're listening to this somewhere, like in the car, yeah, I could do maybe, in the car. Just, just listen. Just open your heart and just, just listen. Just yeah. be present. You can always go back to it. Like I said, it's all archived, so you can always go back to it. Okay, so sitting in your, in your seat, nice and quiet, feet flat on the floor. We're gonna go within to what you cherish, love, and hold sacred. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in, then out. As you're sitting there with your eyes closed, sense the clear blue sky above with the warmth of the sunshine. As you take your next breath in, pull that sunshine in and let that light light up every cell in your body and soul. When you exhale, push out all the darkness, that your worries, your doubts, your fears. Now feel your feet on the ground. With your next breath, share that sunshine with the earth. Push it deep down in her core. With your exhale, Bring the light back through the top of your head, out to the sun, and spread it throughout the universe. Now as you're filled with light, place your hand in your heart. Feel the rhythm. Think of a time, place, event, person, or feeling that you hold dear to you, your happy place. Feel your heart expanding with joy and bliss. Notice your overall well-being, the calmness, the warmth of your heart and soul. Stay here for as long as you like. Here you transcend time. Know that love is a choice. You have the power to change your life. You have the power to influence change by living the example of love. You have greatness within you. You have the power to choose love. Love is the most powerful in the act of compassion towards yourself and others. The power of you is the power of love. Oh, I just love that meditation. <laughs> <laughs> I close my eyes and I, um, I'm always taken to the beach. <laughs> uh, just standing there feeling, you know, the fresh wind of the beach and the band under my toes because I always say that's my happy place. <laughs> um, <Mine too. laughs> uh, it's very peaceful and calming and you know that's what um, that's what this meditation is for. You know you can use it for stress reduction. Mm -hmm. You know if you're feeling anxious it can be used to lessen your anxiety. Yep. Um, Center yourself really. Just, I mean, I feel like my whole body I just I feel so good after that meditation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is really wonderful. And, you know, you can use it as a tool 
for sleeping. Yeah, we really know. developed it for the kids. We did. We really our kids ended up were, liking it for us. <laughs> our kids were having a hard time sleeping, you know, um, especially, you know, how kids when they get even when they get really excited, mm-hmm. you know, or nervous. Our little girl was nervous about going into second grade and then when we moved to our new place she was nervous about riding a new bus. And our little guy when he started preschool, um, you know, we we help them with this because we always, you know, tuck them into bed at night and we always say, um, you know, the little guy says, Mommy, I'm scared of the dark. You know, what little four year old isn't scared of the dark? And I say, All right. I said, Well, why don't you go to your happy place? And you know, <laughs> of course, he's a little guy and he says, you know, his tractor his tractors is his happy place. <laughs> so we, you know, we say like so we say this with the kids at night. Um, we we use this during a children's retreat we taught at, mm-hmm. um, I think I mentioned that before in our last last episode that you know it was really neat seeing all the kids in their unique happy places. That's what really is awesome. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, pretty amazing. You, this this meditation is it's effective in just short doses. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, even if you're doing house chores, and it really helps you take the focus off of having to do like the actual you know, work yeah. of doing dishes or house chores, you know, if you're nervous about a presentation at work or, or something like that. And that Talking traffic. <laughs> Don't close your eyes, but just go to your happy <laughs> place. Your happy place. <laughs> uh, I love it. You know, like, you know, have you ever been waiting in a grocery line and you're kind of just feeling frustrated because maybe you're in a hurry? You know, just say, oh, I'm going to put myself in my happy place when I'm standing in line. Even the long lines, you know, just, you know, as we did in the beginning, you breathe in and then you breathe out, you know, and then as you're, as you're in the meditation, you know, check in with yourself to see how you feel, you know, during the meditation and after it, especially after it, you know, you should feel more relaxed, mm-hmm. you know, some, some deeper breath, your mind a little quieter, you know, especially if you have that, you know, anxiety, um, and most of all, be proud. Be proud. Because after all, you know, it's your happy place. Yeah. It doesn't matter where it is. Just, you know, it's that moment of, it's a minute of peace throughout yeah. the day. And, and life can, gets busy. And you can start dancing and singing, because I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> you ever drive in the car, the kids love that car song when it comes on the radio. And, you know, it's your place of bliss. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. How does McKenna feel with these happy? She feels really good, actually. She she was the one we had um we had really started developing it for because she had a really hard time going to sleep since she was younger, and um she feels a lot of energy around her. Well, she's gifted. She's one of our psychic kids. Well, actually, both kids are psychic, so. Um, at probably around the age of three, she had a really hard time going to sleep at night, and that's when we really started to do our research on, you know, what was going on, and really started to ask around. You know, it's a very tender age because, mm-hmm. you know, um, they, you know, it's a tender age because, of, you know, kids get nightmares and what they feel in nightmares. But um, as a mom, I was having a really hard time sleeping. So mm-hmm. at this time, we were having, we had the farm yet, and we still had to get up at five o'clock in the morning. So I started to ask around for people about it. And McKenna um, on her side of it was giving me all these descriptions of stuff that she was, you know, seeing at night. And as time went on and we started to, you know, do some more research about it, we found out truly how gifted that she was Mm -hmm. and that she was actually hearing and seeing spirits. So this is a part of what opened up our door to a lot of doing research on, you know, on how to help her because mm-hmm. um you know if if you take yourself back to when you were a kid and i know that i used to feel presence around me too right and i never understood it as i was a kid yeah we're kind of just discovering that, that we're even our me and lisa ourselves are empaths like in you know intuitives and psychic ourselves so it's been quite the journey for all of us really it has. it's been a discovery <laughs> process you know um i say it with my dad all the time uh, I say, oh, I said, I got to call my dad today. And all of a sudden, you know, two minutes later, my dad calls. And I'm like, oh, wow, maybe I really am more intuitive than what I thought. But when we started to do the research on McKenna and really started to find out, you know, 
how intuitive we were, like all these doors started beginning to open. Mm -hmm. And then you really started to understand the fact of going with your, you know, what they call your gut instinct. Yeah. And that's really your intuitive feeling. Yeah, we really go into detail with that one in our book. We cover all this stuff. That's why we really had to, you know, put this book together because we just felt it was so important for all of us to, you know, discover these things and you know like for us we really we really found that we were really really empathic you know and so we have to be really careful who we hang out with for you know, how long and going to fairs and stuff we could never figure out for the longest time when we came home we were so emotionally drained we're like what is going on we didn't do nothing but you know we took in all those emotions from everybody and you know we have to be careful where we go and what we do and I think I think a lot of people are more empathic than they we realize. So I mean, it's it's important to get in touch with that and be able to manage that a little bit better too. And you know, well, we did. We just actually found a tool on how to help us with that. So in close, future, yeah, close your aura up. On how to close yourself up when you know you're going out, um, into just even if you're going outside, you know, if you're going to the grocery store, if you know anywhere where you feel you know, kind of a little drained when you come back from going to it. We actually just found a tool that, you know, eventually we're, we'll be introducing, you know, and sharing too. There's only so much time. So much time, so much information. So um, <laughs> eventually we'll be creating, you know, creating some more stuff on that, you know, but our book, Habits That Create a Happy, Excited, Confident You, we really go into a lot of, you know, um, a lot of depth and, in our book, yeah. yeah, I call it our baby, yeah, <laughs> because uh, we created it, and it took some time, you know, it took some time to create, and we can we set it aside, we came back to it. Um, you know, there's some of the things that what you know, well, it's really about getting back to what matters. So you know, we focus on thyself, and you know, dealing with you know your trauma and your hurt. And, you know, getting back in touch with who you really are and loving right. yourself. I mean, it's so important to love yourself. I mean, you can only give to others what you give yourself. If you don't give love to yourself, you cannot give true, honest love to others. It's just a, a false love. It's just, you're just saying words or doing actions in return for something else. And that's not really what love is. Love is, you know, most people, you know, it's, it's most people have a different definition for love, but I say it's unconditional love. So that's hugely, hugely important. You don't want strings attached or who wants to keep track of all that stuff anyhow. I did this for you, you're not even gonna do this for me. No, that's not right. We you know fun. um we focus in on your career, you know, yep. your your lifestyle. You know, this is kind of where, you know, some people have a job where they absolutely love their job. Yep. But maybe there's something that they want more. Like, you know, they have a hobby that they're not able to kind of really pursue you know, like they would pursue. like to. And that's, you know, if it's something you love to do, it's really important that you infuse your life with as much thing, as many things as you can that you really love to do. Because it really is reflection of yourself and other things in your life. Yeah, you really, you know, this is where you kind of bring out your full potential because you're you get creative with it. And you get excited about life too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you do things that you love. Well, how can you not? You yeah, know? you know, there's you you start like emanating um a different light yeah. when you really enhance that part of yourself. Um, you know, we we delve into relationships. This is something that we have like a great experience. experience in. We got dealt with so many different problems and situations and it just and and you know in what we're going on married on 15 years in june and over that time we feel so much has happened to us that you know it's it's something that we really want everyone to experience a great relationship and you know we're not only talking about relationship with your partner we're talking about relationship with everyone around you friends family your children Right, the people you encounter every day. But you know, with, with the relationship with your spouse, though, we really dive into the getting into the the intimacy and the communication and the connection on a deep soul level. That so makes the that relationship so much more special and meaningful. Yeah, it's you know when when you 
feel that feeling of just being with the one that you're with and you know your heart is just full of you know like this is the person I'm with and then I'm so happy and I'm so proud to be with them and I honor that person Mm -hmm. on every level Um, and when you know when you do that you know it's it's really wonderful what you can bring into your your life and along your life stream Mm -hmm. and you know those things you know, those things really do matter. Um, I'm sorry, I need a drink of water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we like to think of your life as a stream of water. And when you add the water to your stream of life, your 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 soul, your consciousness, your, you know, the universe does its part by adding equal amount of energy to it. So you're just, and it has more as you do more things that are aligned with who you are, the things that you love to do, build this life force that just flows with ease and grace. It's just a real beautiful thing when you can do that. It makes going through life a lot easier than trying to climb that uphill battle when your stream is down below in the valley. That's where you should be. Um, we're floating down the stream. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the last part we get into the last part of the book is we get into the spiritual aspect of ourselves. Yeah, you know, this is the part where did you grew up Catholic. Uh, I did. And, <laughs> um, you know, I did. And I actually I believe in, you know, I believe in the higher power and but I believe in ourselves too. Mm-hmm. And you know, I actually one day decided that I didn't feel I needed to go to a church to actually, you know, say my prayers because this is heaven. I mean, if you look around, you know, the the flowers blossoming for us out in the front yard, Mm -hmm. the sun shining on us. And I really started to feel like, you know, maybe I didn't so much have to go to a church. Um, When I was younger, I always liked it because the church felt like a community. Right. You know, you would go to church and then afterwards you would gather together and you would, you know, we had donuts and we had coffee. So it was like a community. And, you know, a big part of your relationship, relationships, sorry, that you encounter every day, you can build that community. Yep. And that's really getting back in touch with what matters. It's building community of loving, supportive people around you in life. You know, and so that's, I really started to see a different aspect of things. And, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, you feel you have to go, you feel going to church is something for you. I'm just saying from my own experience, I started to kind of change my thoughts about, you know, where I had to be, to be on this beautiful spiritual path that I've done. For myself, I didn't really grow up with parents that forced us to go to church, but I did attempt to go on my own to different churches and try different things, but it just didn't really resonate with me. So, I mean, that's when we, you know, when we dove into our spiritual practice, we kind of found things that resonated with us and, you know, that makes us um, a unique experience, not only with ourselves, but our, our spiritual practice too. So and that's very important. We feel anyhow that it's a very important component to anyone's life that really, you know, takes them to the next level. And so, our, you know, our book is we really created that for people who really are, you know, are passionate about, you know, taking our life, grabbing it by the horns and, you know, uh, creating those moments and getting back to what matters most in our life. You know, that's what it's really about. And we created it specifically for people who want, you know, go out there and make the life that they really love and can really. Yeah. Um get back to what matters to them as an yeah, individual. individual. And, and as a the other units as your spouse and your family right. and everyone else too. Right. But mostly it is for the self because, you know, like we said, it, life is a self-reflection. So it really, you know, you got to take your life and create what you want first and then you can express that outwardly to everyone else. Yeah, because when, you know, like we said, when we're, you're in your life stream, you know, all of a sudden you actually find all these things like happening to you that you're like, oh, wow, that, you know, I didn't realize that before, but maybe this is a part of what 
I want to do. Mm-hmm. And like all these things start to just opportunities really open up too. Yeah, it's really amazing. been amazing. And you know, you start to put less emphasis on um, your worries and fears. Right, your worries and fears, and you know, oh, how am I going to do this? And and you really start to enhance the part where it says, you know, you, you know, you, you feel, you start to feel that abundance. Oh, there's there's a lot of joy with it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you start to see things, you know, new opportunities, new doors open. So that's that's one reason why we created the book. Yeah, I mean. We feel it's so important that everybody has a happy and healthy, exciting life. I mean, life is too short. I mean, you know, especially after my father died, I just really realized that, you know, you got you to make those moments count. And, t- you know, time flies fast for these things. The next thing you know, you know, you're at the end of your life and you're saying, man, you know what? I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have followed my dream. I wish I would have been more kind to this person. I wish I would have been more kind to myself. So... It's really important that we we love this book. We fell in love with this book when we wrote it. Yeah. We're still in love with it now. <laughs> <laughs> it is um by I joke I said you know um anyone who's been through labor they can relate to having a baby because there's a lot of you know there's a lot of stuff that you know it can be painful it can take longer and I'm just saying it can yeah. you know but you know when you're in when you're holding your baby, it's like, oh, you know, there's a there's a breath of freshness and there's a, a breath of like, you know, oh my gosh, this is the most beautiful thing. And, you know, and right now, even though it's an ebook, you know, we're still holding our baby. Yeah. <laughs> so. so that's available over at our website. Uh, www.ericandlisa.com. All lowercase. Right. Um, you can, you know, you can head over there um, to our website. You know, you can join our newsletter where we give away tools and tips that, you know, they're exclusive to those who sign up to our newsletter. Yep. Uh, but, you know, there's there's a lot of other stuff over there. You know, there's an about section about Eric and I. Um, our blog posts. All right, our blog posts. We have um, some nice video blogs that we just put up. Yep, articles um, too. Articles. Um, you can find out about some of our live workshops that we're coming, gonna, up. coming yep. up, which we're we're so proud of because this is like still every step is stepping out of our comfort zone, but we're scheduling it in <laughs> and we're getting it done. <laughs> That's it. Got to schedule it in. Um, you can also, you know, um, you know, we have our Facebook page and uh, that's where you do a lot of work by giving daily inspiration and motivation and sharing pictures of our lives and yeah this i mean this is a place where you you know you can really connect with us as well too um you know i do um i do a lot of my own creating over there of a lot of our pictures because i really love to inspire and it's really what comes out of my heart that i put into it um, but you can also find links to our, you know, to everything over there too. Cause I do put it up over there. Yeah. But yeah, I do share, you know, um, pictures of the kids, but a lot of, you know, free tips and, you know, other stuff to kind of, you know, inspire and keep yeah. motivated. It's really nice to me too. Everyone kind of shares the, you know, inspiration. And yeah. Fun. And, you know, if you head over there, you know, be sure to give it a like. Yeah. So we have some homework for you. Homework. <laughs> um, you know, we feel it's important to show gratitude um, towards, you know, to to one another. Um, so your homework is um, to show some gratitude to your partner or spouse. You know, yeah. Um, this doesn't have to be a big thing. No. Um, I, you know, I call it, you know, you cook dinner or I cook dinner. You know, we always make sure to say thank you. Yeah. Um, just those little things, the the little tasks, you know, you taking out the garbage, and I'm, you know, I'm not just talking about the technical house chores stuff. Right. I'm talking about the other stuff, you know. Surprise flowers, the unexpected things. Yeah. Um, you can show your appreciation for no reason whatsoever. You know, making love. <laughs> yep. I mean, just the the little gratitude. Um, so this is your homework: is to express some gratitude, thanking yep. your partner or spouse. Um. You know, it 
doesn't have to be a big, big thing. It could be a very small thing. You know, just try to take time out of your day to do that because it's really, really important because it shows the honor and appreciation um, for the one that you're with. Exactly. You know, those little things do add up. You'd be surprised. I mean, it's a, you know, gratitude is expression of love. So it's, it's nice. Nice to hear that sometimes, you know. It's not always, you don't always have to do it, but it is nice to hear. It does also take the focus mm-hmm. off anything that, you know, um, that your partner or spouse didn't do for you. Mm-hmm. Because then you start turning your viewpoint around and you say, oh my gosh, he or she really is doing more than what I thought they were. And maybe I should take and recognize that more. So yeah. through this, you're recognizing, you're being present with your partner and you're recognizing um you know, something that they did for you. So it's wonderful when you do this. Yeah, and we always say, when I say thank you, you always say... You're welcome. <laughs> right. So, we're, you know, we're giving back to each other. Right. We're engaged in, you know, in life, and it helps to improve your communication greatly. Yeah. And it really does, because, you know, communication is so important, we feel. Yep. So on our next show, be sure to join us same time, same place, where we're going to be sharing the four... Big blunders that conscious couples keep making that prevent them from having intimacy in the bedroom. So we're really going to start diving deep in this stuff. (laughs) And this is some of our very passionate stuff that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, this made a big difference in our relationship, and we took it to a whole new level once we started. We did. um, Talk about a deeper connection. What more deeper connection than being intimate with your partner? Uh, So many wonderful things can come from that that deeper connection and once you know we say in the bedroom but then you know you can also that intimacy starts building outside yeah you know we're focusing in the bedroom (laughs) (laughs) all right well i guess that's it then uh i think that is it so be sure to join us over on facebook our website or in the comments and here or anywhere really right and you know, remember, if you didn't get to listen live today, all these shows are archived. Um, you can, you know, you can find them over on our website. We got a special place just for them where we put them. But we really do appreciate you yeah. taking the time. Great for you guys to be here with us. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah, we really love doing this and we're so happy. And as you can tell, each episode will get, you know, we'll get, get, get so more, much comfortable. more comfortable. <laughs> this feels so good. And I feel more comfortable already. Yeah. But we really do want you to know that we appreciate you being here with us. Yeah, it's great to have you. So until next time. Live your dreams. Love openly. Last often. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, okay. something like that. Great, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Take care. Bye bye.